The North Sea, once the largest subsea oil platform in the world. Within a few years, a new type of oil field is about to emerge in this area. It is the artificial energy island, where electricity can be generated from offshore wind power. The energy islands will be constructed in the North Sea and the Baltic Sea. And as these hubs reach their final stage of construction, combined capacity will increase to as much as 12 gigawatts, theoretically enough to supply 12 million households with electricity. This energy hub project is led by the Danish government, and it is believed to be the world's first ever experiment to build an energy farm in the middle of the ocean. Now why has Denmark come up with plans to construct these energy islands? Denmark's energy transition began with the global shock of the 1970s oil crisis. Half a century from then on, now Denmark is recognized as a nation that has managed to achieve carbon neutrality all without impeding economic growth. Since 1990, we've reduced our CO2 emissions by more than 40%. In the same period, we have managed to secure our welfare system with economic growth of roughly 65%. And this is why we have made job creation a guiding principle in our National Climate Act. The Climate Act the Danish Parliament passed in 2019 sets a target to reduce Denmark's emissions by 70% in 2030 compared to 1990 and achieve climate neutrality by 2050. In order to accomplish these ambitious goals, developing green technologies is essential. In general, Danish experiences over the past decades uh, are evidence that investing in renewable energy, energy efficiency and resource optimization makes good economic sense. The cheapest energy source in Denmark today is onshore wind power, for instance. And in many cases, you will also see that investment returns on green portfolios outperform investments in fossil fuels. That has been showcased several times over the past uh, few years. Most of our leading industry companies generating growth and job creation have sustainability and green transition at the core of their business model. The artificial energy islands can be perceived as a principal outcome of green technology based on multiple investment. In 1991, Denmark built the first offshore wind farm in the world and currently initiated an upgraded version of their project, which is to construct the energy island. Uh, Danish companies like Ørsted and Vestas have been world leading for years. Uh, now we will take offshore wind to a new era. We are establishing the world's first energy islands in the North Sea and the Baltic Sea. Uh, the energy islands allow us to produce renewable energy at a much larger scale and distribute, store and convert it in more efficient ways. The energy islands is not simply about generating electricity from wind power, but a new type of technology is required in order to convert the produced energy into another type of energy. This technology is called P2X, in short for Power2X. Large-sized ships and aircrafts need to consume a huge amount of energy for their operations. These ships and aircrafts cannot run on electric power. Through the P2X technology, the energy produced from wind power can be converted to the type of energy that can be utilized in shipping and aviation sectors. One of the most talked about and prominent prospects in this regard is power to x And in this instance, it's, it's interesting that Denmark actually only recently announced that we would go along with constructing the world's first artificial energy island in the North Sea. The, this project alone provides electricity to an amount of more than, of some 10 gigawatt, which would serve uh, more than 10 million European households while producing climate-friendly fuels for shipping and aviation at the same time. But I would just say that these efforts further carry a huge potential to decarbonize heavy industries and drive energy efficiency at large. Power to X or green hydrogen, as it is often called, is the next step in the green transition for Denmark and the world. Uh, this technology allows electricity production to be converted into hydrogen, uh, synthetic gases, fuels or chemicals. 
In other words, we can remove emissions from heavy transport, such as shipping and aviation, which are difficult to electrify. It was not merely the Danish government's effort that enabled Denmark to successfully acquire green technologies, but the engagements with the private sector were vital. State of Green is a public-private partnership from Denmark, which was established in 2008 in an aim to reach net zero. When it comes to the net zero goals, it's important to have a strong tie-up between private players and the public sector. One of Denmark's highly successful ways of devising solutions to many of the sustainable development challenges is exactly based on public-private uh, partnership model. If you look at it in football terms, you could say that the public sector is the playmaker, the private sector is the goal scorer. As for any team, the reality is that one won't succeed without the other. In any large-scale societal or economic ch change, public and private engagements are to be seen as complementary. For State of Green, it's the interaction between the two that defines Denmark's ability to create a successful transition. A transition which obviously also creates an inciting business case. Prince Frederick of Denmark is patron of State of Green. And this demonstrates a significant meaning, not only to Denmark, but also to the global community. At State of Green, we are very fortunate to have His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark as our patron. And he actually got involved already from the outset back in 2008, which we are very happy for. The beauty of having His Royal Highness as our patron is what I see as its embodiment of what Green Transition means to Denmark and the Danes. Green efforts are not only government driven, neither are they dri driven by corporates with a profit purpose only. In Denmark, we think climate and environment in all aspects of our society, from cradle to crown and from corporates to local communities. After all, for the successful green transition, all concerned parties must pool their efforts towards the common goal. Orsted can be a good example a Danish company that converted from one of the most coal-intensive companies representing Europe to the world's largest offshore wind power company. Yeah, our transformation journey actually started in 2008 um, when we started to focus on renewable um, energy and started to invest in uh, major uh, offshore wind farms in Denmark but also in other countries. At the same time, uh, we made a very clear decision to um, ramp down our fossil fuel business. And in 2016, our strategic decision was to divest our upstream oil and gas business, selling it to the UK uh, petrochemical company Neos. And in that context, uh, 440 employees uh, changed employer and joined in Neos. Um, and that was, of course, a major transformation also for our company. And uh, that somehow marked an, an end of an era, uh, a Danish oil company, Dong Energy, uh, to, to a renewable uh, player, uh, becoming a major renewable player. Yeah, it's never easy when you go through a transition, when you want to change things, especially when you want to change a business which has run uh, quite successfully for many years, it, it imposes challenges. Uh, we have a wide uh, stakeholder cosmos, we have uh, customers, employees, uh, shareholders, policy makers, investors, um, we have to consider. All concerned stakeholders, including companies, shareholders, the government and consumers, work towards the common target, net zero. And as a result, Orsted is now being considered as a success story of green transition. Yeah, in 2020, we already had only 10% from fossil fuels and already 90% from renewables. That's a major achievement for Ørsted. Actually, as um, Dong Energy, that is our old name, in 2009, we set up a target to achieve 85% uh, renewables and 15% fossil fuels by 2040. So that was our target, just turning around the mix because in those days we had 85% from fossil fuels and 15% from renewables. Only we wanted to switch that around uh, by 2040. Actually, we now have achieved this target uh, within only 10 years 
and uh, by 2025, we will have 99% coming from renewables.